Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk back again with another uh, project for you and this time it's one showcasing the new half full um, stamp set. This is a great one uh, for gifting wines which is what I've done here. So I've used our lovely large gusted gift bags but I've created a little box for the bottom. The bottle on its own just doesn't kind of quite look right um, and so I thought if I did a box and you can use these lovely stamps to decorate that at the bottom. So you can see we've got a wine glass, the best, the best wines are the ones we drink with friends, this wine bottle on the side and then on the top here wine improves with age, we improve with wine. Um, all stamped on very vanilla and uh, away we go then. So to start off with you're going to need uh, some of our new craft card stock which is available in a multi-pack um, with I think it's old olive and you're going to need um, your stamping trimmer or an equivalent. Um, I will work out the measurements for you in centimetres and put them on my blog um, but I'm going to work in inches today. So this is 12 by 12 card stock and you're going to trim it down to 11 and 3 quarters by 11 and 3 quarters. Once we've done that, just move our little bits away and we're going to do some scoring. So you're going to score at one and a quarter. So the easiest way to do that is on the right hand side. So one and a quarter, four and a quarter, seven and a half, and at ten and a half. Rotate it once and repeat again. So that we're going to do that one and a quarter, four and a quarter, seven and a half, and ten and a half. So that's all our scoring done on that. And now you just need to come in and reinforce those score lines before we come and do some trimming. Um, I've deliberately made this, um, this makes us about a three and a quarter inch, it's just, um, European bottle sizes are 70 centilitres, um, so there's about three and a quarter inch um, diameter bottle for a standard bottle of wine. you've got a grid um, left there and the first thing you're going to do is trim away the outer three corners on of each of the four. So trim away there and you can actually just notch that out as well. So notching slightly. It's gone really dark today. I was hoping to go shooting archery um, with my son this afternoon but it has gone so dark and miserable it's like five o'clock in the afternoon and in fact you know it feels as if it's sort of you know real autumn which is not good but still there we go it means I've been able to crack on with a few more projects for these lovely uh, new holiday catalogue items um, and this stamp set actually is one of the million dollar um, sales achievers. So when um, when you achieve a million dollar sales, Stampin' Up actually design a stamp set um, inspired by by you. So this is a, a lady called uh, Linda Bowen, I think this one is. But there are several now in the um, Stampin' Up catalogue. Uh, I think this one's a, a, a really useful one that will, you know will, is one to go in your crafty stash for future use. So you'll end up with a piece like this. Uh, those of you who've watched a few of my videos will recognise this as a, a similar to a reinforced lid. So what we're going to do is come in straight down on these pieces here, notch out and notch out. And then I'm going to just cut a very small sliver off the end. That's just to help it fit um, in. Uh, this is back to what I've said before. When we make a box, 
where the the where it's a square box, and you just want to make sure that um, you're not going to get any sort of fouling on on the edges. So that's why I'm doing that. And sometimes you can see working with a bigger box, it just helps to um, fold things out of the way. So turn it again. Now I have tried uh, doing this with a folded corner closure on this, uh, which works. Uh, my original one will use that, um, but it does make it a, a little bit bulky and it actually makes it a bit uh, more time consuming to make. And really when we're gifting a bottle of wine, we're probably not wanting to uh, spend a long time on this. You know, it's nice to make it look pretty, but you know, we want to get on with meeting up with our friends and uh, enjoying their company. Oh yes, and now the rain comes down, lovely. Okay. So, we in effect have got what I kind of feel is a bit of a windmill. Um, turn it over and now we're going to come in with our fuse and try and get that fuse as close to the edge as you can. And I'm even going to put some an extra little bit on those as well because that will just help make, make it really nice and secure. Uh, and sorry, I was saying, so I tried doing a, a, a one where we fold the corners in but I didn't feel it made it as strong as it might. Um, and I think, you know, when you, the, the, the reason I put it in a box in the first place is because, you know, it doesn't kind of stand well in a, in a bag. Um, and yeah, bottle bags are fine, but you know what? You can't actually see what's in there. Um, so once you've done that, just fold up each of those corners, line them up on the edge, like so. And then fold those top pieces in, and that's going to give us a really nice, sturdy bottle base. So there's our bottle base. Now we need some panels to decorate, um, which I have cut here. So I'm using very vanilla and cherry cobbler, and these panels are not quite square. My original ones I cut square because I'd forgotten I'd adjusted the measurements slightly, um, but these ones I have actually adjusted so they are sort of slightly rectangular. So th these are three and one eighth by two and seven eighths, and the very vanilla is three by two and three quarters. So I've um, I've got three of the cherry cobbler panels and I've got three of the very vanilla panels. So I'm just going to come in and start by doing some stamping. So I'm using some archival black ink, which I've got here, and I'm just going to stamp this bottle. Uh, now with these, they are quite detailed and I found it was actually better if I um, had my stamping pierce mat and just stood up for that. So. There's my bottle. Mm, it's not, I, haven't, I haven't stamped that as well as I could have done actually. So actually I'm going to use my spare piece that I've got here. So ink up really well. That's better. There we go. I haven't pressed um, well enough on that one. So that's our wine bottle. And um, the next one is our glasses, or our single glass. So I'm just going to do that one. So again, I've tried to keep the orientation the right way around, not to repeat my issues with my bears that I had before. Uh, those of you who've watched, I managed to stamp a slightly rectangular piece in, in the wrong orientation, so it felt very stupid. But you know, it happens to the best of us, uh, and I'm certainly not the best at all. I, I'm very much a, I'm a messy stamper. But you know, I'm a happy stamper as well. Well, at least I hope I am. Um, I enjoy my stamping and uh, you know, I, I just like to be able to share with you um, what I enjoy and, and, and stamping up products are so lovely um, that you really do, I, I really do enjoy working with them. Um, this, uh, th now I've used some cherry cobbler ink and I'm just coming, okay, I managed to, let me get my other, managed to lose that. Um, Not very straight, but never mind. 
Um, and then the final piece is the large image, which is this one here. I'm not sure. It should just about be okay. So let's pop the stamps out of the way. So this one here, I'm just going to cut that out um, as a tag. So just come in with your snips. Um, if you wanted to, actually what you could do with this one, just have a thought, um, is you could actually, as you cut it, pop it on there, you could, Apart from putting your nice inky thumbprints on it, as I have just done, I wouldn't recommend that. Although it does add, add to the distressed look. If you stick it before you cut it onto a piece of cherry cobbler, you get a really nice backing, which is rich. Um, and that'll just make it a little bit more substantial as a tag. I felt that just on the very vanilla was a little bit um, thin. Although obviously you could use a new thick very vanilla as well. No, I do. Man I managed to get. It. I'm covered in ink today. Uh, I've been doing a fair few projects, and as a result, I possibly haven't cleaned my hands in between stamping quite as well as I should have done. Um, so there we go. There's a rather inky tag. Perhaps that'll just. I'll have to change it into a, into a wine stain. So next thing I want to do is actually colour in some of these. So I'm going to use um, my aqua painter filled with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And I'm just going to come in with that. And as I've said before, the beauty of using the rubbing alcohol um, is that it dries much more quickly um, rather than the water. Um, just don't leave it in your aqua painter. Um, overnight, sort of once you've finished, and then I'm just going to do what we normally do, which is to ground the image. So I'm just going to sort of come across with a that there, and um, then to make the um, other glasses of wine, I'm actually going to use another colour here. So obviously if you want, if your person was having red wine, then that's fine, you, you have some red wine. Carry on with the cherry cobbler. Um, but I'm just going to use, having just to wipe that off, I'm just going to use a bit of so saffron. This one here. And I'm going to do exactly the same, so saffron. I'm trying to keep my inky fingers out of the way. Um, and this is going to be a bottle of white wine as that's what's in my gift bag. And then you can just use whatever colour you happen to have handy to um, do the top. I'll just use a bit of the cherry cobbler just to tie it in. And um, so that's sort of, you know, yeah, you get those foil tops different colour and then you can then colour the middle part if you want. The danger of this is because you're using rubbing alcohol you may get some slight bleeding of colour so just be a little careful. That's the downside of using the alcohol. It's great for colouring in but not so good for going over your um, actual stamping. So we've done those three panels um, I happen to have my fuse handy, so I'm going to use my fuse on the back of those and just attach those to the panel. Just a nice narrow border on those. And then all that's left to do is to create our tag and package everything up. So if we create our panels like so. Obviously it would probably be sensible for me to put the panels on before I created the box, but you know where would be the fun in making life easy for myself? It just goes to show if you haven't, it is easy enough to pop those on. Um, 
as much as anything because it's a fairly substantial box um, and you're putting card layers on so there we go and then this last one um, obviously you could create a fourth panel to go on the back if you wanted to but I think most people only look at the front um, and the sides so there's our box we then need to get our bag as you see here pop that in and then let me just see I think I might have an empty wine bottle here which might oh yes that works just as well there we go pop that up and then whatever thread you happen to have handy I've got a little bit of the pot of thread um, just gather that up I can't see that at all with me doing it up right and just wrap it round and tie it in a knot and then punch a hole with a handheld punch through the top there thread our tag through create a bow and then this thread actually spreads out so it's gone quite narrow there but you can it is a tube so you can in fact spread it out afterwards if you want to um, I rather like it. it's almost like a bit like copper wire so I quite like it no so just trim the ends off there and there you have a decorative bit gift bag ready to gift and here's the one I shall actually gift because that one's got the wine in I hope you've enjoyed that project and I hope you're enjoying these series where I'm doing three projects with one stamp set. Come back and see me again soon. If you want to buy any of the products, please visit my blog and, and my website. It's HeidiSmith.StampinUp.net for purchases or you can go to my blog and that gives you my contact details and get in touch with me and I can sort out placing your order. Uh, bye for now. <laughs>